Uh, what we do is this. Um, we basically give a certain number free uh, with, the, uh, with the main server, and then we charge you for additional licenses typically. Uh, we can always work something out with you if uh, you're kind of a nonprofit or any kind of organization where we can give you more free licenses and things like that. But typically, we give about five free uh, per copy of each of the each of the different ones. Yeah, a lot of a lot of times, what we do is we'll just give people free demos of everything. I mean, if if it's you know free, you know, when I say free demo, I mean like full full license, no restricted license, just. Use it and uh, so now so the user portal and this is where things change and so now I'm logging in with my username and password so it's a little bit more like logging into any web interface I log into my Gmail with username and password I log into Facebook or anything like that. I have not tried that yet, and I don't know if that would work. Well, normally, no, normally, what we would do is this, right? Um, what we we have a lot of uh, we have people that are interested in Active Directory. So one of the things that we do is with Active Directory usernames, email addresses, they're all the same because they have an exchange also behind it. So we just use that username and and just uh, fill it in here. Uh, I don't think it would support a full email address, though. But it would probably support at least the user part of it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, that that's you know that's a good point. So we could actually modify the login to deal with that. But the username would still be a username. I don't think I don't know if we can go as far as email. But um, so the user portal, it's still very familiar. Nothing. Nothing's really changed much here per se. Um, basically, uh, we have a unified mailbox, and I don't remember if this extension had any voicemail. Um, so call routing is still here. And so what's probably going to, uh, and uh, I mean, there are a few, uh, again, a couple of extra settings here. So uh, we really haven't changed too much on the user portal side uh, per se. Uh, the user portal is, very, is great. Uh, what we'll probably do is we will look into restricting access to certain modules in the user portal in the, probably the next version. So some ACL support where we can actually restrict the user's access to certain things, modifying his routing, uh, probably uh, ability to record and things like that. So that's what we're mostly focusing on per se as far as the users are concerned. Another thing that we're really, really happy with most of our happy with users is actually putting in certain client applications for them to use. So uh, lots of stuff like our desktop client is a user-based thing. So I'll, I'll get into videos of that towards the end of this. So. Yeah. Let me see if this will cooperate with me. So I can actually show you the BlackBerry application is here, and you can see it log in. It should okay? There it goes. It's just very slow. But so the BlackBerry application has now been updated for UCS five, and what we're probably going to do here is is this will actually change quite a bit. Um, probably uh, in the next few months, uh, we'll probably add a lot more functionality to this and change a bit of the interface. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, so um, basically what we'll do is this will probably get updated more as uh, we go along. So, um, so let me just uh, briefly uh, give you the demonstration of our, our uh, uh, single site redundancy. Um, so basically, um, you can see here we have uh, different boxes here to represent some of the things running. Now, if you're non-technical, ignore me for about five minutes. <laughs> I'll just uh, briefly go over this. So the arrows sort of represent uh, the direction of sort of the replication. 
So you can see here some of these arrows have only one direction, meaning they replicate from master to slave right now. Uh, Cyrus will probably do some kind of master master at some point. So this might actually change to a normal arrow. Open LDAP is still master master and Postgres is simply master slave. So the Postgres, what's happened, we're still using Postgres as a database for our logging. Uh, much, of, much of our call logging is still going to be logged to a Postgres database and we'll still use that for our metrics and things like that. Uh, configuration is in the LDAP. Um, the IMAP server, again, it's Cyrus. And we now have a Jabber server that is, it's, uh, also uses our LDAP, actually. Yeah, and some, there's some more key benefits uh, I can go over. Um, like I said, full identity management now. We have LDAP, and our LDAP is sort of, uh, it's basically using much of the standard sort of login mechanism. So you can even use our LDAP server to authenticate your own system if you wanted to. Um, so that's sort of the main advantages there. Um, we have uh, enterprise integration with Exchange and Active Directory. Uh, right now you can actually... Um, through some manual work, you can replace the, the IMAP server with the Exchange. Uh, we'll look to make this a little bit more, but this is an active development. Active Directory, again, also active development that we're working on. So, And um, we have a full SOAP API. So I didn't show you this, but and if you see an open source, you've probably seen this. And uh, how many of you are familiar with the SOAP API? I've used it. So. So, yeah. So, this is the uh, this is the basic SOAP API. You can see handle action and login. But the more interesting, yeah. So, oh, it's very smart. So now you get a full SOAP API. Now. If many of you who've seen the open source and our latest open source, this is all in there. Uh, but this was not in our, uh, our, our, our original commercial. It was, a, it was a different API. It was actually a lot weaker than this. Uh, this has tons of settings. Um, you can even actually, uh, you can even send faxes through this actually. <laughs> so I'll show some uh, videos on this actually. Uh, let me, uh, so let me uh, show you one. While you're doing that, can you also put the audio to the mic? Uh, which one? Maybe you can navigate it. It doesn't have any audio on it, so. So, basically, um, so you can see here, he's going to right click this, and uh, he's going to modify his, his preferences basically, which is just his username and password. Same thing as the user portal. And so I have an email here I sent to myself, and it's a phone number. Let me call. And you can see here I had a soft phone logged in here that I can actually answer the call on. And this is the more interesting part. You know, I have a PDF file in my briefcase. Let me just drag it over here. Now I can send it as a fax. So on our fax number, and uh, if, if anyone has ever tried this, faxing actually works internally in Druid, so it's kind of an interesting thing. So, so why should this matter? This matters because people, people will use Zebra, and there are a lot of companies that are starting to use Zebra most of them otherwise. In fact, we are working with a New York company who wants to host Druid and host Zebra. So I'm going to log into my user portal here. Actually, Ming is logging in right now. So here I am. I'm actually logged in into my own user portal to receive the facts. So, uh, yeah, there's no facts right now. There's only one voicemail. And then you see the facts came in. And you click on download. It will actually show the facts 